guys! In this video I'll be making a bag for my Princess Aurora costume. I also wore it with Briar Rose which is the next video series to come. Basically what I'm doing here is cutting out four rectangles, two rectangles for the lining and two for the actual bag. I also trim off any uneven edges because I want all of the rectangles to be the exact same shape. I'm also cutting out two rectangles from this organza. This is the same organza that I'll be using for Aurora's cape, which I still haven't made yet, but I will get around to it eventually. I just place the organza on top of the existing rectangle shape I previously cut, and just cut the organza a tad larger than the rectangles underneath, um, because organza needs that space. <laughs> So now we have two rectangles of this organza fabric and four rectangles of the main fabric. Thank you to Nicole from Let Down Your Golden Hair for gifting me this fabric. It's very pretty. Then I got some of my leftover trim from the Aurora dress and what I was thinking of doing was decorating the bag with this gold leaf trim and then placing the organza layer over the top to encase the, the trim so it won't catch onto anything. I pinned the gold leaf trim down onto the right side of the bag fabric and this is the fabric that I'll be using for the outside of the bag. The lining, the two lining rectangles are left aside for now. So the pattern that I tried to follow was trying to make it look like the gold leaf trim was growing out from the bottom of the bag so that's why I had all of the gold leaf trim starting from that single one point at the bottom of the rectangle. I basically pinned down all of the trim um, and yeah that's that's it. <laughs> so that's what one side of the bag is looking like so far and now it's time to do the other side of the bag. Same sort of thing, pinning down the gold leaf trim and that's it. <laughs> so bringing that over to the sewing machine, I started at the top of the leaf trim and then worked my way down and I only sewed on the stem of the leaf trim so none of the leaves are actually sewn down to the fabric. I used a longer stitch length on my machine because I found that using a short regular stitch length um, for some reason it kept stuffing up and not wanting to sew through the trim so I don't know if that's helpful to any of you. Um, I also backstitched at the top and bottom of each leaf trim. And here I was lazy to take it out from under the foot so I just twisted the fabric back around so I could sew up the second stem. And I did find that I had to lift my foot and get the leaves out of the way so I wouldn't be sewing over leaves. But it's okay if I did sew over leaves because it gives it that organic look, <laughs> I guess. And I just continued that for the rest of the leaf trim. And here's what one finished side of the bag looks like, and here's the other side of the bag. So I think the leaf trim looks really good with the pink fabric, and I think it will work perfectly with the Aurora dress. 
And here's the back of the panels if you're curious. <laughs> so next up is sewing the organza layer over the top of the panels. So to do this I just placed the organza on top and then sewed with a very small seam allowance all along the edges of the organza and I made sure to um, I made sure to keep the organza lying as flat as possible um, and trying not to stretch it as I went. So essentially these stitches are acting as basting or stay stitches. I'm not sure, I think basting stitches to keep, basically to keep the organza in place and moving forward I could treat this fabric piece as one single layer. So here's what we've got so far. Um, you can see that the stitching is very close to the edge, maybe a couple millimeters or so. Um, and yeah, that's because I didn't want those stitches to show on the outside of the bag. So next I'm placing the two panels together, right sides together, so the organza layers are facing one another, and then pinned, pin this down along the three edges of the rectangle, so um, each side and then also the bottom, so those three edges and then leaving the top part of the rectangle open, I think. Yes, that's how you make a bag. <laughs> you need an opening somewhere. And now it's time to sew those three edges down. So moving that aside, I'm going to work on the lining layers now. So I'm doing the same sort of thing that I just did and I'm going to sew down the three edges of the lining layers together. Yeah, exactly the same way that I did the, the actual fashion outer layer fabric pieces of the bag. So here are the two lining layers sewn together and here is the fashion fabric main bag. <laughs> Um, going back to the lining layers, I'm trimming the seam allowance down and I also trimmed the seam allowance of the main bag fabric. I also trimmed the corners as well, um, so the bottom of the bag, I just clipped those corners. I don't know if you can see that. So at those two bottom corners, I'm doing this thing where I pull the fabric outwards and then match the two seams together. I'm hoping that the visuals will explain this because I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it verbally. Um, but yeah, it's basically as you see here. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and I'm just measuring what this distance is, which is about three, three and a half inches across, um, and then repeating that for all, all corners of the bag. So there's two corners on each, uh, each bag piece, so two on the lining and then two on the outer fashion fabric. 
So that's what that's looking like now. Um, it's just been pinned and this will help form the square shaped base of the bag. And here's the lining layer. And so now I'm just going to follow those pins and sew them down, I guess. <laughs> um, so with this, because I wouldn't say a lot, but a little bit of strain will be put on these seams. So I made sure to do quite a few back stitches um, at the beginning in the middle point. So over the seam allowances, I just made sure to back stitch, back stitch. Wow, that was weird. Back stitch over the seam allowance and then continue forward and then back stitch at the end just to make sure it's extra secure. So now those have been sewn down, I'm just trimming off the little triangle pieces that they've now formed. Obviously don't trim into your um, stitches, but just trim off the excess fabric that would make everything bulky. So next up I'm doing something that I should have thought about at the beginning. Um, basically because this is a drawstring bag there needs to be an opening somewhere at the top for the drawstring to go through. Now if you recall um, I did just sew up straight up both side seams of the bag so there was no opening. So now I'm just using a seam ripper to make a little opening about a finger for a finger to poke through, I guess, um, which is roughly the size that I need because I'm just going to poke through a safety pin with ribbon um, later on. Now I did this for both the outside fabric and the lining fabric, but in the end I didn't, I didn't need to do this for the lining layer, um, I just thought I did. So just to make sure that the stitches don't come undone, I am going to uh, back stitch at those two points where I'm putting pins in now just to make sure that the stitches won't come undone um, you know as the as the bag is worn and torn <laughs> the other thing that I decided to do was sew on sew down the seam allowance for the outside fashion fabric um, because it's got organza attached to it it means that it can get quite bulky um, so, especially at the drawstring part of the bag, so just at the top part of the bag, I sewed down the seam allowance. So I top stitched basically from the outside, which then uh, also caught the seam allowance with it. I'm sorry that was a terrible explanation, but I hope that this clip here makes it clear what I did. I just sewed down the seam allowance open flat, which essentially means that the, the top sorry, the outside of the bag would have top stitching. Watch this part carefully because I'm terrible at explaining things, as you can tell. I put the outside fabric into the lining layers so that the right side of the lining was touching the right side of the actual bag. I hope that made sense. Um, just always remember right sides touching, right sides touching. Um, that's basically what I was thinking in my head. Um, so once I did that, I uh, lined up the side seams of the bag and put pins in place and then I also just pinned 
all around the top edge of the bag. Bringing that over to the sewing machine, I then sewed all around the top edge of the bag. I made sure to leave a little opening so I could turn the bag right side out. So here you can see that I left this small opening where those two pins are. So I can take out those two pins now. I then trimmed down the seam allowance. Now that the seam allowance has been trimmed, I can go back to that small opening I left earlier and turn the bag right side out. So this is a little bit of a struggle, but it's manageable, as you will soon see. Now that the bag is right sides out, I can pop the lining into the bag like it's supposed to fit. So the lining layer just pops into place there and I make sure that it aligns at the bottom corners, which it does, thankfully. <laughs> and then around the top edge of the bag, I tried to de-puff, <laughs> de-puff. Um, flatten out the top edge of the bag um, because it is a little bit puffy um, especially that there is um, quite a few layers around the top edge I mean there's the lining layers the lining layer the fashion layer and the organza layer and the seam allowances as well so here's me trying to flatten out the top edge of the bag and pin that pin that down and I try and catch the seam allowance in the pinning as well so it lies nice and flat. As for the little opening I just made sure that the raw edges were tucked neatly sandwiched in between the lining and fashion fabric and then pinned that down as well. continued pinning all around the top edge of the bag. Then I brought the bag over to the sewing machine and top stitched all around the top edge of the bag. And this makes sure that all of the raw edges are hidden and also makes sure to keep the bag top edge flat um, and not puffy. <laughs> Then I 
oh, I didn't film this part, but I stuck pins in into the bag, as you can see, and I use these pin markings as guidelines to sew the drawstring channel for the bag. Um, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, so two two horizontal lines across the top of the whole bag, and make sure that those lines, those seam lines that you're doing, align with the little drawstring openings that we left in the bag earlier. So this is the final bag without the drawstring, of course. Um, you can see that those seams that I sewed align perfectly with the little openings that I left in the bag. And that is so I can thread my ribbon through. So I've just got some ribbon here and grabbed a safety pin. And I'm sure all of you know about this drawstring safety pin trick, but attach the safety pin to the end of your ribbon and then start threading the ribbon through the drawstring channel. So I threaded the ribbon all the way around until it came back out the same way it came back in and just making sure here that the ribbon is flat all around the top edge of the bag just making sure it's not twisted and then with the end of the ribbon I just tie that in a knot Now it's time to do the other side. So again, adding a safety pin to the end of my ribbon and then starting at the other side of the bag, threading my ribbon through the drawstring channel, and going all the way around. Takes a while. <laughs> snipping off the excess ribbon and then tying that in a knot. I also decided to tie another knot over the existing knot because I thought my existing knot looked ugly. <laughs> cool. So once that's done, the bag is done. Yay! So that's the final bag. I think it turned out very well and I really like the square base it has so it doesn't fall over when you put, on, put it on the ground. And this is the inside, so all nice and neatly lined. And there's plenty of space for bobby pins, safety pins, flowers, hand sanitizer. Um, what else do I put in my bag? Keys, phone, money, ticket, whatever you want. <laughs> So here's what the bag looks like against my Aurora dress. If you want to find out how I made that dress, all of the videos will be linked in a playlist in the description below. Please make sure to check out that video playlist. Playlist of videos. Um, anyway, some bonus content for you guys because 
thank you for sticking around this long. <laughs> um, not only with this video, but also this project. I assume that if you have gotten this far, that you've been watching all of the Midnight Masquerade making of Aurora making Midnight Masquerade Aurora making of videos. Um, thank you so much for your support and encouragement along the way. Um, I really appreciate it and it's nice to know that people enjoy my videos. Yeah. Um, so here is some bonus content. I'm just going through how I, well, I'm not actually going to speak much about it because it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's basically clips of how I sewed the little flower decorations for my hair um, to bobby pins so I could then use the bobby pins to pin them to my hair. Um, I bought these little flower things from eBay and they came with these plastic backs um, which I didn't need so I chopped off the plastic backs and took out any plastic components of the little flower and then stitched the flower back up together and then on the back of the flower I sewed a bobby pin to it. it there's basically nothing else to explain. <laughs> um, so that's what I did for Aurora's hair flowers. Um, and I don't think there's anything else um, that I had for accessories for Aurora. It was just the bag and flowers in her hair. I mean, I did have a wig, but I just did whatever on the day, whatever hairstyle worked. And it did. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the last video of this making of series. Well, it's the second to last, so it's the penultimate <laughs> video. Um, and in next week's video, it will be the final reveal showcase of the dress. So please stick around for that. I'm pretty sure that's what all of you have been waiting for. So that's the flower finished, at least one flower. Um, I did six flowers in her hair. I had three pink ones and three purple ones. Here are all the flowers, very cute. And this is my little bag with bobby pins and most importantly, a safety pin. So I popped that little bag into my Aurora bag as well as all of her hair flowers. And that's it. I then popped that bag into my suitcase, ready to take to Supernova. So, see you next week. Bye.